Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some thoughts about this weekend's big fight between unbeaten prospect Danny Garcia and future Hall of Fame champion Eric Morales. Now, before I continue, just remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, Garcia looks good, so good, that the casinos have actually installed him as a favorite over Eric Morales, right? And Garcia has beaten names like Kendall Holt. So the choice in this fight is either between the future a knockout puncher with power in both hands who's unbeaten, who has hung in there against quality opposition, right? Or a Hall of Famer who had his day, left the sport, has come back to the sport, kind of like Bernard Hopkins has, and is insistent on fighting guys like Marcus Maidana and now... Danny Garcia. You know, maybe I'm just an old timer myself, but looking at the films, I'm going with the underdog in this fight. I'm going with the technician, Eric Morales, right? Let's talk about why. Danny Garcia looks good to me. He has a lot of talent, but if you strip away all the glitz, in my opinion, and I know this might be controversial, Danny Garcia is a mid-range hooker. <clears throat> He's a guy who stands about arm's length away from you. He is trying to counter you with hooks. It's clear that he throws much harder <clears throat> than advertised. In other words, looking at film, when he hits opponents with hooks, they often crumble. Right, And he's two-handed. So he can throw a left hook. He can throw a right hook. He doesn't telegraph which one's coming. On the videos, often it looks like he's hitting opponents who are completely unprepared for the punch or for its power. What he's also able to do is other than hit you in the head with hooks, occasionally he could drop a shoulder, mostly his left shoulder, and he can dig a hook to the body, right? He doesn't move like Orlando Salido. He doesn't have the volume of Orlando Salido. In fact, in my opinion, he's not as advanced as Orlando Salido, who is playing angles, right? Salido will throw hooks. Right, but he's a little bit off at the side. And Salito makes sure that he's far enough away where you can't hit him with your jab. And if you're going to try to find Orlando Salito with your jab, you have to literally turn to find him. Right here, Danny Garcia, in my opinion, a little less advanced, is right in front of you. You can actually find him, particularly in the later rounds, with your jab. He had a very tough fight against Ashley Theopane. Very tough. And in my opinion, Theopane actually came on strong late in that fight and was routinely able to hit Danny Garcia in the face. Because the problem with a mid-range hooker is they're throwing punches from wide angles. Right? Their hands are occupied throwing these looping punches. They're not that protected up the middle. Now, how do you beat a mid-range hooker like Danny Garcia, especially an unbeaten guy? Well, for one, if you know the guy is going to come at you with hooks, then you know he's going to hit you in the side of your head. Right? He's not coming down the middle. He's hitting you at the sides. So the kind of guy who can, in my opinion, beat a mid-range hooker is a guy who 
has his hands up. In other words, the defense has to be where he has his hands up. And so as you throw the hooks, the guy naturally is able to block it. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, um, a guy who can only put his hands up some of the time. No, you have to be able to put your hands up practically all of the time, right? Because Danny Garcia only needs one good shot to take you out, right? If you're a big time mover, like a Sergio Martinez, you don't even have to have your hands up. You can stay way outside. But Eric Morales doesn't have Sergio Martinez's legs at this point in his career. Here's the thing with Eric Morales that I think will help him beat Danny Garcia and upset the sports books and uh, the odds. You know, Morales naturally has his hands up. He naturally is a great defensive fighter. If he knows that you can only really hit him in four spots, this side of his head, this side of his head, this part of his rib cage, and this part of his rib cage. In other words, if he can eliminate chest shots, if he knows exactly the four areas of his body where you can hit, then he can take away the two sides of his head by having his hands up. In fact, let's get more advanced. Morales actually fights at an angle, right? So he'd have his hands up and he'll be leaning with his left towards you. So the head is taken away. Then Morales will lean forward. And because he's leaning forward, he's taking away his body. Because for you to get to his body, you're going to have to get through his top. And Morales is an, ex uh, is an excellent counterpuncher. Right? If you look at Morales against another mid-range hooker with, in my opinion, higher volume and more awkward punches and punches for more angles than Danny Garcia... Just take a look at the Eric Morales versus Marcus Maidana fight, right? Maidana is a mid-range hooker like Garcia, only Madonna is throwing punches at times from his waist. Those are harder to block than what Garcia throws, right? And Morales can throw straight punches. In other words, if this is a contest of counterpunchers, Right, Morales, in my opinion, should be able to bust up Danny Garcia's face because Danny's going to be throwing these hooks, leaving himself open. And I believe that Morales is a skilled enough counterpuncher to literally throw straight punches and bust up the kid's face. I think Eric Morales is a very live underdog in this one. I like him to pull the upset. Let's talk about Manny Pacquiao. I know many people are going to say, well, wait a moment. Didn't Morales get knocked out by Pacquiao twice? Right? Forget the fact that Morales is the last man to beat Pacquiao. There were two other fights. If Manny Pacquiao was able to bust up Eric Morales, why can't a young lion like Danny Garcia? And the reason simple. They're two different fighters. Right? Garcia is not blessed with great foot speed. At least it's not part of his game. Right? If maybe he can run fast, I don't know, but he doesn't move that fast in the ring. Manny Pacquiao has some of the best feet in the sport. He bounces around the ring. Right? It's very hard to keep track of Manny Pacquiao. The other thing is, of course, Garcia is a mid range hooker. You know where the punches are going to be. You know he's going to throw primarily hooks, right? Manny Pacquiao is not a mid-range hooker. Manny Pacquiao can actually throw a pretty straight left hand when he wants to, right? Manny Pacquiao does come in and flurry. But take a look at Pacquiao against Oscar De La Hoya. You're going to see he hits De La Hoya with many straight left hands. Let me also point out, too, that, you know, Danny Garcia, you know where he is in the ring. 
he's about an arm's length away. Prime Manny Pacquiao is an ambush fighter. You don't know where he is in the ring. And of course, Pacquiao has the faster hand speed than Danny Garcia. I would argue that the fact that Eric Morales lost twice to Manny Pacquiao has very little relevance to this fight, right? Also, I will say this, the David Diaz fight. I know people are going to say, hey, didn't Eric Morales lose to David Diaz? Folks, watch the fight. Forget the scoring. I'm here to say that Eric Morales got jobbed in that David Diaz fight. I believe he beat David Diaz. I believe he lost to the judges, right? That's, um, you know, Morales, forget age too. We're finding out that certain styles, and Morales has never relied on hand speed, certain styles where you're a great defensive fighter and you're able to do the little things, have your hand up, lean, fight at an angle, throw straight punches. If you have the right style, you can fight well into your late 30s, right? We're seeing that. In fact, we're seeing fighters now in their late 40s, right? Evander Holyfield is still competitive in his late 40s. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, guys who don't rely on hand speed, who literally rely on the other parts of the game, can actually be very effective late in their careers. And let's remember, Eric Morales is the champion in this fight, not Danny Garcia. Let me say this too. Think about the mental preparation. We know that Eric Morales can perform in championship fights. Why? Because he has a whole career of doing so against big-time opponents, right? Big-time opponents. Um, we don't know that about Danny Garcia. You know, I, I encourage everyone who believes that Danny Garcia is unbeatable to take a look at the last few rounds of his fight against Ashley Theophane. Right. Just take a look at the kid's face. Take a look at the kid eating jabs and ask yourself, wow, you know, why can't an Eric Morales do that? Also, take a look at his stamina. You know, Eric Morales recently went the distance with Marcus Maidana. Right. If you want to deal with a fighter who's going to be in your face trying to rough you up for 12 rounds, that's Marcus Maidana. Right. Just ask Samir Khan. That's a real Stamina test, right? If you look at the last few rounds of the Ashley Theophane fight against Danny Garcia, Garcia looks tired to me, right? Well, guess what? This fight is 12 rounds, right? And if Garcia is unable to land a bomb early at a certain point in this fight, technique is going to take over. And then what you're going to see is an admittedly older fighter who doesn't have the hand speed that Garcia have methodically take him apart with straight counters. Let me also point out, too, that Garcia is a counterpuncher. He's a bit too predictable to me. Looking at the films, it looks like if an opponent throws a left hand, Garcia rolls with it and comes back with a hook on this side. Right? That's his level of counterpunching in my opinion. Well, what happens if an opponent <clears throat> fakes like he's throwing a left hand? What happens if it's a feint? Because the opponent knows that Garcia is going to come with something on this side, and so the opponent can then duck inside and have a clean shot at him. Those are the kind of games that a veteran technician like Eric Morales plays. I think Morales is a live underdog. My base bet in this one is Morales simply to win the fight. I concede that I would straddle that with Garcia by KO simply because Garcia does have a very hard punch and he is considerably younger than Morales and he's certainly going to test Morales early. So Morales is going to have to get out of the first four rounds. It should be a great fight. I think Morales 
has a great chance to um, successfully defend his title. I'm expecting the upset in this one. I like Morales in this one. Let me also say this about Eric Morales, right? Don't be fooled. Morales can still punch. Don't be surprised if Morales solves Garcia early and then stops the kid late. That's a distinct possibility. Don't fool around with prop bets like Morales by decision. While Morales may well win this fight by decision, don't rule out the idea of Morales by KO. Morales actually fought a few guys on his comeback and he stopped some of them, right? So just because the Marcus Maidana fight went the distance, right? And keep in mind, Maidana, very tough character, right? You know, Maidana's the kind of guy who gets hit in the rib cage by Amir Khan, a big puncher, goes down relatively early in that fight, gets off the canvas, and then, of course, is not only in the fight late, many people thought that he <laughs> had a shot at a knockout late, right? So just because Marcus Maidana went the distance with Eric Morales, don't assume that a relatively untested Danny Garcia will go the distance. Let me also say this, too. And I say this to the Cal Brook crowd, okay? Garcia, like Cal Brook, unbeaten, has looked great in fights. But styles make fights, right? If you fight guys who have similar styles and you excel against them, there's still unanswered questions when you step in the ring against guys who have a different style. Right, So while Garcia, like Kel Brook, has looked great in fights, I'm not here to say otherwise, and while Garcia, like Kel Brook, has a great offensive arsenal and hits hard with both hands and has a high knockout ratio, right? all I'm saying is at this level of the game, you're going to encounter guys who know how to block many of your punches. And when that happens and you need a plan B or a plan C. When Garcia realizes in this fight that he can't stand at mid-range and hook Eric Morales, he's going to have to come up with something else, right? And all I'm saying is, you know, as you look at the fights of youngsters like Garcia and Cal Brook, you really have to ask yourself, okay, if their plan A doesn't work, What's their plan B, and have I seen it before? If you haven't, then you're flirting with danger. When a young guy fights an old technician who has seen it all, like Eric Morales. I'm expecting the upset. I like Eric Morales here. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me also say this, too. You know, Ashley Theopane went the distance with Danny Garcia, right? Think about that, right? And so Eric Morales, who's who's bigger than Thea Payne, um, <laughs> why is there an assumption that Garcia is going to be able to walk through him? There shouldn't be. Thanks for watching.